I'm actually a late adopter of new technology. My dad bought me the first iPhone when it came out in 2007. And it suddenly became the most popular kid in my class. And an internet communicator. An iPod. <laughs> a phone. I was ahead of my time. And that lasted for one week until I decided to switch back to Nokia because I found the iPhone hard to hold in one hand. We're making scrolling a thing of the past and reduces scrolling fatigue while reading long documents. Now, there's another emerging technology that I might not be able to appreciate immediately. Autonomous driving. Welcome to Tech Please and Nei Ping. Autonomous driving is not new to us. Some of you may have ridden in a self-driving taxi before, or even own a car with an autopilot system. Basically, there are six levels of autonomy. Levels 0 to 2 require human monitoring of the driving environment. At levels 3 to 5, the autopilot system would do the job. In a level 3 vehicle, you can text or even watch a movie. That sounds awesome, right? Can I take a nap in it? No, you can't take a nap in it because it still requires human override. You need to be ready to take control in case of system failure. A level 4 vehicle doesn't require any human interaction for safety. And yes, you can take a nap in a level 4 vehicle. But self-driving is supported only in limited areas at this level. OK, here comes level 5, full driving automation. Level 5 vehicles don't require any human attention, so they don't even need to have steering wheels or brake pedals. Now, let's talk about the most important question. Are autonomous vehicles safe? The first time I rode in a self-driving vehicle was in a scenic park. It was a shuttle bus taking tourists to different locations. I think it's probably a level 4 vehicle because I didn't see any driver in it. I was kind of nervous to be honest, but it was really slow, like 20 kilometers per hour, so I was fine riding in it. But imagine, in a big city, with very complicated traffic conditions, would you dare take a driverless vehicle that runs at 60 kilometers per hour? Many experts believe that autonomous cars can be trained to be safer than human drivers. Well, that makes sense, right? Because the system would never get tired, drunk or play their phones while driving. So maybe one day they can make the world a safer place by eliminating human error and reducing the number of car crashes. Also, research has shown that it takes about one second for a human driver to respond to an unexpected event in traffic. That's partly why we need to keep a certain distance with the car in front. Autonomous cars are better at sensing and reacting, so the distance can be shortened which means more cars can run on the roads and higher traffic capacity for the city. That's a bright side. Another safety concern I have is about cybersecurity. We know that in theory, an autonomous vehicle's operating system could be hacked. So what if the hacker recorded my not very beautiful scene in the car and blackmailed me? OK, joking apart, hacked vehicles could potentially be rerouted to a place where a robbery or assault is planned, and connected cars can control IoT devices at home, giving criminals access to people's home computer networks. So it seems like there are still a lot of problems to be solved in terms of the safety of autonomous vehicles. There's one other argument about autonomous driving that often comes up, the moral dilemmas. OK, think about this scenario. Your autonomous car, let's say it's a level 4, level 5 vehicle hits a pedestrian. Who should take responsibility for this accident? Is it you in the car, the designer of the autopilot system, or the car's manufacturer? OK, here's another question. When it comes to a dilemma of choosing between different human lives, for example, hitting one person versus five, if an accident is inevitable, who should make the decision? Is it you in the car, or the car's autopilot system? Having said all that, although I don't fully trust it for now, I still have faith in autonomous driving. Sure, it'll go through a long process of testing and for people to be comfortable with it, but I believe that one day it'll be mature enough to be mainstream. 
like the iPhone I once abandoned. I'm Nathan. See you next time.